Now let's look at the MSR radial nerve uh, entrapment protocol. So we've got Kendall here, and the radial nerve enters the arm between the uh, two heads of the tricep muscles, so it, between the medial and long. So there's a space there that's just distal to the teres major muscle and distal to the quadrangular space. So we're just going to get right in here and going to have Kendall just bend your elbow and bring your forearm towards your head there. Perfect. Okay. So you're going to really kind of right in between the two muscle bellies where that nerve enters. You can feel that there. Yep. Now, because of all the interconnecting fascia here through the triceps, we're going to also pin and stretch type of release for the triceps. There we go. Good. And we're going to work our way down. Good. Doing okay? Yeah. yeah. And as we start to get close to the elbow here, we have to remember that the nerve, as it comes through, is going to wrap around and go through the uh, spiral groove of the humerus. And it actually pierces right between the brachialis and the brachioradialis muscles uh, anterior to the lateral epicondyle. So we're going to just kind of get in here and see if we can palpate the nerve. And I can feel it right there. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Sensitive spot right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of a pin and stretch type release. Mm -hmm. There we go. And now we're going to incorporate a little bit of nerve flossing as well. So what we're going to do is, uh, as I bring your arm over, I'm going to flex your wrist to pull the nerve through and I want you to look away. So, so we're coming this way. And there, perfect. Do you feel that tension built? Yes. Yep. So let's just test this. Now if we wanted the nerve to glide, First look away, and then look back towards me. Does that tension decrease? Yes. Okay, good. So we can go either tensioning or gliding procedures, depending on how we palpate and identify the restrictions. Good. Now, at this point here, the nerve splits into two. So a deeper branch, the posterior interosseous nerve, goes through and it enters through the arcade of froze, while the more superficial one innervates the brachialis, brachioradialis, and the extensor muscles here. So by doing that nerve flossing type procedure, we're also going to start to work all the fascial restrictions along the radial side here of the forearm and the extensor group. And we're going to follow it all the way down. I'm just going to switch hands here as we get closer to the wrist. So we're going to come around. There we go. Doing okay? Yes. Okay, good. Good. Okay. As we get close to the wrist here, we want to, once again, not neglect the joints. We're going to check the carpals, make sure we mobilize the wrist and, and start to kind of open up the area here. There we go. We have to remember with that radial nerve as we approach the thumb here, it's a lot of sensitivity through here. There's a spot here about eight centimeters from the wrist, uh, Wartenberg's point. Uh, if Kendall had an inability to extend her thumb, then that could be an indication of a neuropathy or a problem in there. So like Wartenberg syndrome. So once again, just make sure. Um, just want to release a little bit of the fascial restrictions in and around the thumb here. So this we can go back to previous procedures we've used to mobilize the fingers and thumb. And I'm looking at it more from just a fascial perspective in terms of all the tissue tension that can be generated through here.